is too much, too much. Well, I just come out, come out to say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, come on church, let's bless his holy name. Do I have anybody that's just grateful that God saw fit to make your bed, not your cooling board. But he woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. But we say back home, clothing in our right minds with the articulation of our speech and the movement of our limbs. Oh, come on, church. That's not everybody's story this morning. So we just want to give God a shout of praise for his goodness and his faithfulness unto his people. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm very grateful that God has allowed has allowed me to come into this place, into this space, and to give me an opportunity to speak into the lives of his people. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it for granted. Because I know there could be any number of people standing where God has allowed me to stand. I again, I again thank Pastor Gilbert and his lovely wife for inviting us to come and to share this morning with his people. There's a few things that I have learned in ministry, just a few things, but one of them is that you just can't have anybody coming to feed your sheep. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Because you don't always know what they're getting fed. Amen, amen. And so I bless God for him trusting me enough that I may come and deposit something that will yield good in your life. I, I do, I do want to, before I get into the word uh, for this time, I do want to apologize uh, for this morning as it was my first time coming out and uh, meeting the people and uh, speaking God's word, but I, I should have gotten permission. I, 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 I didn't mind my manners, Pastor Keith, and I forgot to ask Pastor Gilbert, was it all right if I preach it like I'm home? Can I preach it like I'm home? Amen, amen. I got permission. Y'all heard it? I got permission to preach it like I'm home. All right, all right. Well, that's good. That's great. I, I, I am, I am just uh, overjoyed. <laughs> overjoyed just to be in you all's pr uh, pr um, presence. I am going to lift up a scripture for you this morning. I'd like for you to, if you will, turn either in your Bible or on your phone or on your iPad or. However you get the word of God in you, I want you to turn to the book of Hebrews. Can we land in Hebrews in the 12th chapter? And I am going to just read a few verses from the New Living Translation. And there we find these words. Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, who am I talking to already, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Verse 2, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. 
Verse number three says, think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Here ends the reading of the word of God. We know that God's word is already blessed. And for your thought to meditate on for this anointed and appointed time, we're going to call this one, In It to Win It. Is anybody here in it to win it? Let us bow for a word of prayer. Oh, kind and loving Father, Lord, how grateful I am to be considered among your vessel that you can use. Now, God, I'm asking you to shape me, mold me, make me after your will. God, right now I'm asking that you will put me on the decrease, that you might increase. Hide me behind your rugged cross and let the people not hear or see I enter, but they will hear and see you through me or in spite of me. I bless you right now, God for what's about to take place in this place. God, I pray that your anointing shall fall fresh upon your people and they shall be better for having come this way. I thank you, God. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And everybody in the house said amen and a man in it to win it all right can i just go back go back just a, a little bit in time the, because i want to talk a little bit about a movie that it came out some time ago uh, uh, maybe maybe it was before some of your time but but i believe in a minute some of you will resonate with the movie of which i am speaking this movie was based on a true story that chronicled the spectacular journey of a thoroughbred racehorse by the name of Red. Uh -huh. Red, now Red was big, Red was strong, oh, Red was beautiful, and had all the ingredients that it took to be a star. But Red was an unusual horse because although nobody knew it at the time, Red was destined to become the first horse in 25 years that would be a triple crown winner in the world of horse racing. See, in other words, Red was destined to win. All right, now, 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 during this time, some said that he was quite possibly the best racehorse ever. But there were many who had no faith in red because it was believed that a horse could not, uh, now listen to me, a horse could not be built for speed and endurance. Oh, come on, come on, come on, somebody. Uh -huh. Experts said that the horse had to be built for one thing or the other. Uh oh, uh oh, I'm helping somebody. Uh, but Red, uh, uh, some of you may know him as Secretariat, as most, uh, uh, most of us know him by Secretariat. Uh, he beat the odds. So he proved that he was so much more than what the naysayers and the haters thought. Oh, I'm helping somebody already. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he was quick. 
so he could break the records. Uh -huh. But he could also endure, which meant uh, he didn't get tired too soon. Oh, yeah. When, when, when Red, when, when Red was pushed to the limit, he proved that his limits weren't determined, come on here somebody, weren't determined by what other people thought he could do. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. You see, because when it was needed and when it was necessary, he would reach down on the inside of himself and pull out a second wind. Oh, has anybody ever had to do that from time to time? Just pull yourself out another wind so you could keep going? You see, the other amazing thing about the story here was that Secretariat was owned by a woman. Oh, 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 oh. She, she, she was plain old Penny, who was a housewife and a mother. She was somebody who the world would think knew nothing about horse racing. But she set out to win the game that was dominated by male uh, persons. Not only did Secretariat make history, but so did his owner. There was something that we can learn from Secretariat and Penny, if we will, for this moment, if we choose to. Now, can I just tell you a little bit that not far from the place where I grew up, there was the second leg of the Triple Crown. It's run in a place called Pimlico Racetrack. Pimlico, if you aren't familiar, is located in Baltimore City. Now, every third Saturday in May, the horse race lovers descend on Pimlico to see if there is a possibility of a triple crown winner. All the ladies dress up in their hats and their cute dresses and they walk around with their sips of whatever they sip. I don't know what they sip, but they walk around sipping whatever it is they sipping, having a good time at Pimlico. Now, I have never been to those races, but I get myself a ringside seat in front of the television. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's where I am. <laughs> you, you see, there is something, folks, about watching them as they come out of the starting gate. Has anybody ever experienced watching those magnificent creatures that God has designed as they come out of the starting gate and they're headed for the finish line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, they are strong and they're muscular creatures. Um, and they cut through that track uh, as if they are weightless. Uh, the jockey rides on their backs uh, and he guides them uh, and, and encourages them uh, to keep running until the race uh, is over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and if you ever watch it, especially when it's a rainy season, uh, those Horses, they kick up dust um, and they kick up dirt uh, and it's all kind of mud uh, and it's all over the place, uh, but they never seem to mind. Mm. <laughs> one, one piece of the headgear that they put on the horses uh, that's essential is called blinders. <laughs> Uh -huh. You are familiar with blinders? You, you've seen how they put that headgear on a, a horse that, that's about to race. And the, the purpose of the blinders is so that the horse will look straight ahead. Oh. See, even though they understand that there are other horses in 
close proximity, they don't see the horses to the left nor to the right. Uh, in other words, uh, you see, they can't get distracted by who is running beside them. Oh, God. Oh, somebody got to learn something from the horse race this morning. Uh, as I meditated on the word of God in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, in those first few verses, I got a picture in my spiritual imagination uh -huh, of the race that Christ is calling all of his children to run. It's a race that calls for discipline. It's called for determination, and it's called for devotion. Oh, I'm helping somebody already. This is a race that once we start, once we come out of the gate, we will need to run as if our lives depend on it because it does. Oh, God. Oh, I'm helping you already. You see, once you come out of the gate, y'all, we can't half step. We can't get sidetracked. We can't backslide because the way in which we run the race will determine what kind of a witness we have become for Christ. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, we got to maintain our form in the race. And that's critical, my brothers and sisters, because it will determine how many people we keep from stumbling who are watching us. Oh, I'm talking about a responsibility this morning that we have to our brothers and sisters who are coming along on this journey. Men and women of God. We are gathered in this place on the Lord's day as people who are in the race. I believe, I believe that we are among those who are destined to win for the cause of Christ. Oh, you all know, you know, you know, you all know that uh, uh, the Pastor Gilbert introduced us and you all know we've never been here before and, and we've never met most of you before. I have no prior knowledge of any of you. I don't know if you are, are steadfast and immovable. Maybe you're always abounding in the works of the Lord or, 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 or maybe you might get a little wishy-washy every now and then in your faith. I, 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 maybe nobody here, maybe not over at this church, but where I'm from, sometimes people get a little wishy-washy in their faith. But, 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 but since, uh, but since I've been invited to bring the message, um, it is truly my duty and above all my honor, as well as my assignment to come here and remind us uh, that we are in a race uh, and quitting is not an option. And unlike in the world of horse racing, where there's only one winner, I got some good news. Hallelujah. There is more than one winner in the race of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I would like to say the more winners, the better. The better. The better. Did, did I get that right? Did I say that right? Bless it. Bless, bless God. So can we look at the text this morning so we might come to understand just a, a couple things that the Lord sh will, has shown me that will help us to endure, persist, and keep the faith. In other words, if we're going to be in it to win it, I want to make a couple things plain to you. The first point, my first point, is that you got to stay faithful to the end. Ah, it's faithful, faithful to the end. Can I hear you say faithful, faithful. to the end? Ah, verse 1 in the text uh, tells us about a great uh, cloud of witnesses uh, who surround us. Uh, these are those who have been faithful uh, over a few things. Uh, and now God has taken them uh, to make them ruler over many. They have stood the test uh, not fully knowing where God would send them, what he would have them to say, 
what he would have them to give or to give up. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I go to Hebrews 11 and 13, I will find that all of our people that died, that they, they died still believing in the promise of God. Am I right about it, Bible scholars in the house? I, I believe I am. The word says that they did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from the distance and they welcomed it. Oh. Oh God, read your word and you will find it there in the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Now, we'll find Noah, a drunk, no, yeah, he was, had, built, had to build a boat to save his family's life from, from the flood when the sun was shining high in the sky. Oh, you all remember Noah. Noah, I call him the one hit wonder. Well, I had one son. Sermon. It's going to rain Sunday after Sunday. Whenever you heard Noah, all he could say is it's going to rain. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Abraham. Anybody remember Abraham? He was a deceiver. Uh-huh. He was, had to believe that even in his old age, uh-huh, old man, and here was Sarah, a uh, old woman had to believe that they could still come together and come and from that coming together would be, would come a child named Isaac oh yes 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 he would he would become the father of many nations Joseph you all know Joseph Joseph was a dreamer who went from the pit to the palace uh -huh. He was forgotten by the cupbearer, hated by his brothers, beloved of his daddy, accused of rape by Mrs. Potiphar, yet he became second in command in the land of Egypt. Ah, yes he did, yes he did. Isaac, whose name means laughter, escaped becoming a sacrifice as a burnt offering because the brother was replaced by a ram in the thicket. Yes. Oh, I believe, I believe that they knew what was recorded in Hebrews 11 and 6, that without faith, it is impossible, impossible. I said it's impossible to please God. And anyone who comes to him must believe that he is. And he does reward those who diligently seek him. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. Don't misunderstand. These people, these patriarchs, they were not perfect. But rather they were faithful, heading towards perfection. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think, I think, I think we get that. They had issues. They had problems. They had circumstances and situations. But they didn't let their mess hold them back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope I'm encouraging somebody's heart already this morning. So the text tells us, the text tells us that we have to strip off the weights that hold us back, that slow us down. The weights of laziness. Mm -hmm. uh, weights like lying and cheating and stealing. Weights that cause us to sow to our flesh instead of the spirit. The sins that trip us up and make us fall. So let me tell you this. We got to fix our eyes on Jesus. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The second verse in the text reminds us that... Uh, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. 
He is the beginning and the end. In other words, he's Alpha and Omega. When we are tempted to sin or when life takes an unexpected turn that has the potential to make us come apart or fall apart, we got to remember to readjust our thoughts, to realign our perspective and keep on running. Oh, I'm helping you already. You see, if we find it recorded in James 1, 2, and 3 that we should consider it joy. Ah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We got to consider it joy when trials uh, and tribulations uh, come our way and consider it an opportunity for great joy when you know your faith is tested because that's your opportunity to grow in Christ. Am I right about it? Do I have any witnesses in the house who understand that the, the best place it is for you to grow is when you are being tested? tried, when you are being tested, when you are in a fire, when you feel like giving up, that's when God is working in your life and is bringing out something good in you. Oh, I know what I'm talking about this morning. Let me tell you, let me tell you, I've been there. I've done that. Oh, as we like to say, I got the t-shirt. I got the video. I got it all because I've been in that place. I First time I learned and I read over James, I said, Lord, James and fell and bumped his head. What are you talking about that I ought to call it joy, that I ought to consider it a good time when, when, when trials and tribulations come into my life. Well, one day, I was minding my own business. Has y'all ever just been minding your business and something unexpected just drops in your house, just knocks on your door, and you weren't expecting it? Well, let me tell you, about 10 years ago, about 10 years ago now, I experienced a loss of my job. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just corn along, minding our own business, just doing what we do. Uh huh. Yeah, we were serving God and 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 and, and helping out and uh, pay, working with the pastor at our church and doing all of this. And all of a sudden, I was working at seven o'clock in the morning, and by eight o'clock in the morning, I had no job at all. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so here I find myself sitting down in the uh, executive suite and the people from HR. Anybody ever been there where you go and you sit and, and they bring in the HR folks? See, that's when you know something big about to, about to happen. <laughs> that, that's when you know they're about to ask you for your pager. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, that's back in the day. Ha, <laughs> ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and can I have your keys, Miss Brown? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So here I am, here I am. I, I'm sitting there. I, I, I'm sitting there. And, 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 and the lady from HR says, um, uh, I I'm, I'm going to um, walk you back up to your office and, and let you just pack up your things. I said, pack up my stuff. I came in here on the shuttle. I can't take no refrigerator home on the shuttle. <laughs> I can't carry that downstairs. She, 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 she said, don't you, don't you worry, don't you worry. She said, um, it's all right. She said, you know, come back the weekend. You get your husband to help you, and you can, you know, move your things out. I said, okay, all right. Then I just gathered what I could, you know, what I could carry in my arms. And, and I got on the elevator, and I caught the shuttle, and I went back to my car. And, and, and of course, I had a moment to, 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 to kind of collect and process what just happened. I, 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 you see, I had, I had uh, one of those careers where, where, where people didn't often lose their job. Uh -huh. I, had, I was a nurse. I had a marketable skill. Uh, I could work just about any place in the world, really. I, they, they used people who had the skill that I had been taught and the experience that God had allowed me to get. But, 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 but here I was, here I was, church, in, in the middle of a situation, 
And I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And so we fast forward and, and, and we get home. I get home and I, I call my husband. I tell him what's happened. And, and he rushes home and, and bless his heart, the, the wonderful man that he is. He, you heard how wonderful he is because he told you how I just cold, hold, held on to him and couldn't let go. You all heard all of that. So, 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 so you know, he rushed home and he brought these lovely flowers and cards. And, and he said, I know we've never been here before. But let's see what God is about to do. Oh, he said, why don't you take a load off for a minute? Hear from God. Because we see, 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 we sense that there was a change in direction. But as we went forward, things got hard, got hard. We were used to, to, to me working and to him working. And the lifestyle that we had set up, come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it meant that it needed, you know, both of us started it and both of us needed to finish it. And so I got to a place where I was tempted on more than one occasion, if I can just be transparent for a minute, I got tempted to go back to what I knew. I wanted more than anything to go back to my comfort zone. God sent me here this day to speak to somebody in this house who is struggling in their spirit with trying to open a door that God has already shut. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, see, see, see. He, see, sometimes we replace our faith with that word called fear. And when we let fear set in, faith has little room to grow. I know what I'm talking about this morning. I know what I'm talking about this morning. But, 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 can we just hold the phone right there? Because when you are in it to win it, I'm going to talk to you like uh, I will talk to the Israelites. Uh, you can't go back to Egypt. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, you wanted to get out uh, for 400 years. Uh, and the Lord made a way for you to escape. Uh, you can't can't go back to the way that it was. We have been given a new freedom in Christ our Savior. No longer are we tied to our oppressor. No longer are we connected to the enemy. But we must be like that race horse and look straight ahead. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't turn around. Tell your neighbor, don't you turn around. Don't you turn around. Don't you turn around. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing for you back there. Nothing for you back there. You see, we might have to kick up some dust. We might have to get some dirt in our eyes. But the harder the race, the harder we pray. Oh, am I right about it? In the house this afternoon, you see, the greatest test. Uh, the greater the test, uh, the greater the testimony. Yeah, yeah. I tell you to keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, I tell you to keep your eyes on Jesus because he already has shown you how to run a race uh, with grace uh, and with stamina. He was in it uh, to win it. Uh, our Christ uh, was in it uh, to win it. Uh, and he did it for you. And he did it for you. And he did it for you. And he did it for me. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know he did it. He did it. He did it. He did it. He did it all the way. All the way to Calvary. All the way to Calvary's cross. For I remember when they told me that how they had hung him high. And they stretched him wide. That he hung his head. And for me he died. I'm glad about it. 
it this morning. Oh, I heard the song right. Oh, this will take you back. This will take you back. But I heard, I heard the song right. Put it like this. He said, on a hill far away. Anybody ever heard that? Stood an old rugged cross and the emblem of suffering. Ah, and I love that old cross Woo! where the dearest and best for a world Ah, our God, he stayed, he stayed the course. Oh, yes, he did. So we got to hang in there. We got to hang in there. So, so far, so far, I've told you two things. I told you that we got to stay faithful to the end. And we have to fix our eyes on Jesus. My third point. My third point. We got to focus on the finish line. Mm -mm -mm. Remember, remember, I told you, the secretariat, and nobody thought the secretariat could make it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, church, I, I hate to come all the way to Colorado and be the bearer of some bad news. But the truth be told, People have said the same thing about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know, I know he has. I, I know they have. They, they, there are some people who are betting that you won't finish the race. <laughs> they believe that you're going to quit as soon as the going gets tough. Uh -huh. And you know why? Because some of them are going to try to hold you to the you you used to be. They're going to hold you. Some people like to tie you to your past. They like to make sure that you make no forward progress so they can keep hating on you and say that you won't make it to the end. But, but, but can I tell you? Can I tell you? Uh, let, me, let me teach you something else. You see, in the situation of the top races, and the horse racing industry, that the more races you win, the longer the next race is. Oh, God. Okay, okay, let me tell you, let me tell you what I'm telling you. Let me tell you what I'm telling you. Triple crown races. The Kentucky Derby race is a one and a quarter mile race. All right, all right. And if you win that and you come up to Pimlico, the second leg in the triple crown, that, that track it, it is one and three sixteenths of a mile. Uh-huh, uh-huh, see, 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 we're getting a little longer. And if you win that and you go up to New York and run the Belmont Stakes in June, uh -huh, Belmont is a mile and a half track. Oh, can you see it getting longer and longer? <laughs> can I tell you and that the distance of these tracks are no joke for a horse? Uh-huh. There's no, no, no joke for them. Statistics will bear out that because of the danger in horse racing, there was almost 500 thoroughbreds in 2018 that died because of their injuries they incurred during horse racing. 
Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, But for real, y'all, a horse race is essentially nothing more than a sprint. But for Christians, we run a marathon. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, You see, and the concern with the horse is that the longer the race, the more pressure is on the horse and the jockey to make their way to the finish line. Oh, my, my, my. You see, the goal, come what may, is to make it to the finish line. <laughs> Woo. Can I tell your house this morning, this afternoon now, that that sometimes God will work that same way with us uh, as we mature in our faith. Do I have any mature saints in the house this afternoon that can attest to the fact that as we mature in our faith, when we get over a little trouble, here comes bigger trouble. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, God, God. And and as we get over the little trouble and we get the bigger trouble, then when we get over that set of troubles, uh, then here comes the big, the great, big, gigantic, can't find my way, can't see my way, don't know my way, can't find my way, troubles that show up in our lives. But I I came, I came to encourage your hearts uh, this afternoon that uh, you are still uh, destined to win. Uh, Yes, you are. Uh, Why? Because our Jesus uh, has already overcome. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Somebody give God a hand praise uh, because he... He has already got the victory in his hands. The Bible says that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. And now he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. That lets me know that he went through some horrific stuff, but he never let it stop him. He never quit and he never let go. The good news, the good news here, men and women of God is because he endured so shall we endure also and because his grace is sufficient when we are weak he is strong we shall we shall we shall not give up we shall not give in we shall not throw in the towel Our race, our race, our race has nothing to do with speed, but it has everything to do with endurance. Can I tell you that the ecclesiastical writer put it like this? He said, I have learned that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. Oh, I know I'm right about it in the house this morning. I came out to Restoration Christian Fellowship, RCF, as you call yourself. I came this morning looking for a few people who are still in it to win it. Don't you worry. You might need some help early now and then you might need a brother or a sister to come and help you to pick you up to make sure you get to the finish line I know I'm right about it but can I tell you one more story and I promise I'll go back home that the story goes like this there was a young vibrant well-trained athlete. His name was Derek Redman. Derek was a young British 400 meter sprinter who ran a race in the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. This young man, he had great 
promise and he trained himself for this very moment come on here saints as he was running along the back stretch of the of the track all of a sudden he felt a terrible excruciating pain in the back of his leg well what had happened was he had snapped his hamstring and that thing hurt like he had never hurt before but before he could realize it my brother was down on the ground oh yes he was yes he was in all that pain and agony Derek, as you might imagine, he was devastated. He was so disappointed. And it looked like that Derek was down for the count. But all of a sudden, Derek felt somebody came up alongside of him help the brother up off the ground even in all his pain his disappointment his devastation and feeling counted out but he felt somebody pick him up hold him up hallelujah to Jesus Derek didn't know what was happening but all of a sudden what was going on, the fans could see that Derek's daddy was up in the stairs. Ah, 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 ah. Daddy saw what was going on with his baby boy and he jumped through the stairs, went through the security barriers and made it to his boy. And when he got to his boy, he held him up saw the anguish on his face hallelujah to Jesus hallelujah and together father and son they made it I said they made it I said they made it to the finish line can I tell somebody today you might be in pain you might be disappointed. You might be devastated. Some people may have counted you down for the count. If you got to get on your hands and knees and know in the heart of heart that our Heavenly Father, He sees you. He sees you. And He is there to help you make it to the finish line i'm asking for just two or three people in the house are you i said are you are you in it to win it say yeah say yeah say yes say yes say yes i need some people that are in it to win it. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how hard it is. But I do know that a man named Jesus will come alongside you and walk with you. He'll talk with you and he'll tell you that you are and you are and you are and you are his own in it to win it. Come on, church. Give God a praise, a hand praise in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Come on, church. Stay in faith. Don't give up. Don't let go. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Focus. Focus on the finish line. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to make it. It's going to be all right. Come on, church. Let's be in it to win it. In Jesus.
Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.